super important for suppliers to note is the lawn and garden. So it, it just, they are a category that's not that big outside of this time of the year. So they're benefiting pretty strongly from the fact that tax returns are coming in at the same time that everyone has to start updating, you know, working on their lawns and, and uh, all that kind of stuff. Hello and welcome to White Label Advice. I am here today with our founder and CGO, Eric Howerton. Hi, Brooke. Good, yes. to, good to see you again. <laughs> and we also have a guest who is in Maryland, and that is our Director of Strategy and Insights, Tim Jefferson. And hello, Tim. What's wherever up, Tim? you are. Yes. Hey, guys. I'm glad to be able to be doing this remote. Uh, it's a uh, it's- definitely going to be a, a different experience for me not being in the room with you but it's very exciting all right well welcome 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 and tell us a little bit about what you do at white spider yeah absolutely so as director for strategy and insights here at white spider you know i manage uh, our search sensei clients across the board for some of our biggest brands to increase their organic relevancy in on walmart.com and as well as you know average for paid search and recommending on what the best strategies are for what fits their products in the best way. Awesome. Well, that sounds really important. It does. It does. <laughs> it sounds very important. <laughs> very important. And that's cool. We're so happy you're here. And we saw there was a there was an article that came out and it was uh, Walmart. It's right here on our screen. Yeah. And it was an article that came out and it was just kind of talking about, you know, it's called Tax Time Insights. And so they surveyed a bunch of shoppers and just kind of were asking them what they plan to do with their tax return money. And one of the cool stats that I saw on there that was, that was 90% of Americans shop at Walmart. Yes. And which, I mean, we it's believe that we, I mean, we're here yeah. in, we're here in Northwest Arkansas. So we completely believe that 90%, I mean, I think it's a hundred percent of Arkansans shop at Walmart. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I know a hundred percent of my family shops at Walmart. So. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the I number one retailer in the world, right? True. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Speak True the that. truth. Speak the truth, Tim. <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, one of the uh, this article also said that three out of five of those surveyed plan on spending some of their tax return money on shopping. And so, what does that mean for Walmart suppliers? So, when you know, it, so what is what kind of opportunities does this open up for Walmart suppliers now that shoppers, with you know, ninety percent of shoppers are going to you know go to Walmart. And, um, you know, some of them are going to spend this tax return money. What does that kind of mean right now at this time? Yeah. Uh, so, like, as of right now, I mean, it's just so important to make sure that you're involved in search because the traffic is going to increase. You know, people are going to start getting their tax return money end of April, middle of May. And so the traffic going to the site is going to just build and build and build. And so there are a lot of ways that you can make sure that you are growing that presence on site. But you need to make sure that you are because there's going to be more traffic flowing in. What are you thinking, Eric? Hey, I'm just looking at all these stats. You know, I, it's, I, I it's, a, it's a lot of stats. It's a lot of stats. I appreciate Walmart Connect, though, putting that out. I mean, because I know that uh, a lot of brands are looking for opportunities, you know, and, and this is definitely one. I mean, we're right in the midst of it. We're at the end of March 2022 right now. Yep. And Taxes are due yeah. in Tax. like 15 it, days. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, got to get on that. <laughs> and, and one of the striking, I mean, not striking, but it proves, you know, what we do here at White Spider, uh, the stats they shared there is, you know, 71% of um, Walmart consumers are doing it on Walmart.com. Mm-hmm. 52% are using the app. That's yeah. So, it, you know, it shifts this focus from just making sure that you're in, as a supplier, you're in store, uh, presence is there to also making sure that your dot com is ready to go mm-hmm. yeah for sure yeah and i like this uh this where it's talking about the 14 percent year-over-year growth for certain categories for mm-hmm. the omni shopper right omni, which, yes which is something i think that you yep. know it's worth calling out you know how walmart media group changed to walmart connect right mm-hmm. to kind of really further instill that omni channel message from walmart and i mean you know walmart using its own data throwing it out there i mean showing that there's a lot of growth in the Omni space. And so being present, Tim, to your, kind of your point, both in store and online, I mean, you know, brands working with Walmart knows that Walmart's an Omni-channel retailer and then making sure that your items are found in, 
any form of transaction or, or uh, path to purchase from the shopper. That's exciting. What, one of the things I thought was kind of interesting, not to go off the oh, yeah. script. Oh, that's fine. Do it. Usual, but, <coughs> but you know, it. are the categories that are top of mind when shopping with refund yeah. money at Walmart? I was really actually very surprised about the apparel thing. Right? Yeah. yeah. Being, the, being yeah. the number one category. What, what, are your, what, are, what are your thoughts on that, Tim? Yeah, no, I, I was actually very surprised to see that as well. Um, you know, when you think of tax returns coming in, apparel does make a, a little bit of sense in the fact that uh, it is on the lower end. So people are buying for quantity, I think, with their tax returns. Um, you will see if you were to go down in that article and looking at apparel specifically, it, it is a, a widespread market. I think men's jeans is what spikes the most. Um, so it. it <laughs> It's very interesting that they're just going out broader. Um, they're not really searching from a brand perspective. Hmm. They're more searching from that side of just going out broad in the apparel. The second one was actually was, was not as surprising to me because it's in season, mm -hmm. but it's super important for suppliers to note is the lawn and garden. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it just, they are a category that's not that big outside of this time of the year. So they're benefiting pretty strongly from the fact that tax returns are coming in at the same time that everyone has to start updating, you know, working on their lawns and, and, uh, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Hey, all the so, flowers and pots and growing vegetables. Yep. Yeah. Everybody's excited to, to get in that sunshine and start doing stuff out in the yard. Get their hands in the dirt. The, uh, on the apparel, you would just mentioned something I think is really important for brands to understand. Like when you say they're researching on a broad scale basis, right? They're more like looking yep. for, I mean, what are they looking for? Kind of get a little bit more detailed about that. Yeah. Uh, so when you go into the apparel category, it's not like they're searching, you know, Wrigley jeans so much or that they're searching uh, North Face sweatpants, for example. Mm -hmm. They are searching on the side of men's, uh, shorts, men's jeans, men's underwear, mm -hmm. men's t-shirts. What's very interesting is that it usually tends to lean towards the men's category when, when searching from a non-branded perspective. But that's where brands have to really understand the opportunity that exists on not just relying on your brand perspective. You know, when someone goes shopping in store, they will often, you know, they have a preference, right? They might be looking for Wrigley jeans. They might be looking for North Face sweatpants. But when online they search on a very broad spectrum to be able to understand every offer that's within that market yeah 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 it makes sense so if i'm a brand and you're saying wrigley jeans are you meaning wrangler wrangler yeah wrigley is like wrangler <laughs> yeah my bad <laughs> i was wondering hey. i was like oh, maybe I was like, it's, it's, yeah wrangler, I, I meant wrangler i'm reading the print in this it's super small my bad <laughs> it's all good it's better i know my hand my handwriting's not that great obviously. yeah it's terrible uh, no i mean it's better that we call you out than somebody call you out on, on social comments, media yeah in comments it's yeah. And unlike you, yeah. yeah gosh but i mean uh, but, you know well, so you gotta I, provide some comments. yeah well i think that it's you know it's one of the terminologies I, I know that Tim that you use is like branded and unbranded keyword phrases, right? So if I was Wrangler, right, instead of really trying to hammer down on my brand name, looking for men's jeans, women's jeans, et cetera, like, I mean, it's, it's, that's important to go after those unbranded keyword phrases and to understand that that's really, I mean, case in point, that's what shoppers are looking for. They're topping in the attributes that they're looking for, not yeah. necessarily a brand name. So is this the time to kind yeah. of start a paid campaign, you know, f and start going Ab and try to get in front of those on those non-branded mm -hmm. keywords? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first of all, we know that the top of search is king, right? Mm -hmm. You know, consumers don't really go down to the bottom of the page that often. They definitely don't get to page two that often. So with paid search, you're able to take advantage of the increased traffic, to take advantage of the increased purchase desire, so it's not just traffic, it's actual purchase desire, to get your product at the top of the page. Going back to the unbranded versus branded perspective, it's very clear the unbranded gets the more traffic and search, and is also more incremental to your business. Because hmm. on a branded side, it's, it's almost nearly impossible to conquest on, on branded terms hmm. on .com and on app. So, Yes, it costs a little bit more because it's more competitive. There are going to be competitors going for it. But this is the time because you have the purchase intent with the increased traffic 
to start a new campaign. Nice. Are you reading some more stats, Eric? Yeah. I'm, He's over I'm, here going through the whole article. Yeah, I am. I, uh, what I'm, I'm just appreciating as we go down these, these stats, like the, the omni-channel stat, like more than three in five Walmart shoppers are online mm -hmm. while in stores yep. to yep. inform their purchase decisions. Right. Yeah. So how, how could uh, how could a brand really affect that on the paid strategy side? Tim, what are some ideas that you have? Yeah. So like for my for me, you know, if, I, if I'm a Walmart consumer and I'm shopping and I, I do the same thing, I, I will go online in store and I won't just check Walmart. Sometimes check in to make sure I'm getting the right deal in store. But how you can influence that for Walmart specifically is using paid campaigns to target these keywords, because what consumers are doing when they're in store is looking up men's jeans to see what are the best possible offers within that marketplace. What is the, do you have paid promotions? Do you, is there a brand at the top of the page? What paid allows you to do is influence that search, influence that view that the consumer is getting. I, you know, targeting men's jeans makes it so when someone goes online or on the app while they're standing in store, searches men's jeans, your product's right there front and center and top of mind. And then they can look up and they see it right there in the aisle as well. So, so there is that connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, you know, not only can you, you know, as a brand steal that journey, you know, it, it, or I guess interfere that journey that maybe a shopper's having, but even if they're looking at your jeans, you can reassure and confirm that they're on the right, that they're making the right purchasing decision at that time yeah. with mm -hmm. that digital influence. And, and the good thing Absolutely. about paid is, is that like what we're talking about, the timeliness of this, right? I mean, if you're trying to organically reach up, you know, at tax season, it's going to be really challenging, right? We know organic just takes time. Yeah, you have 15 days. Yeah, you have 15 <laughs> days. Yeah. But you can get a uh, paid campaign going on ASAP, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can oh, be activated. How long does it, it usually take? I mean, for, I mean, even if you're a brand doing a lot of stuff, but you wanted to, I guess, uh, do a little bit, you know, Kind of going I mean, direction. It, when, when I set up campaigns, it takes about, you know, five minutes. Wow. wow. You know, it, it is it is very quick. There are a ton of agencies out there that can help you with this that have built the technology to be able to streamline through the API connection. And, and it really is a quick process if you know the keywords you want to target and the product you want to target with. What what technologies companies exist, oh, what, Tim? What, what, what yeah, what, what to do that? Uh, do you know I've, I've heard of uh, White Spider. Okay, one. cool. There right, we go. Yeah, there yeah. we go. There's your plug. Um, you what know, I, I've I've heard I've heard of them, and I know uh, right now as we're talking, you can't see me, but I'm repping the swag. So guys, just look at this big uh, spider on my hat. Yeah, yeah, go to them every go. time. Good job. Good job, Tim. Hat. Good job, Tim. You passed the test, man. I know. You'll be invited back. <laughs> yep. We only invite people that plug our business. Right? <laughs> Good hey, job. man, you got to believe in what you do to be happy with it. That's yeah. right, man. We got, the best in the, we got the best in the business here. Um, it, 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 our technology, and it kind of what, what's interesting about paid search um, and, and that a lot of the other agencies out there, not, not to shame anyone or anything like that, that don't understand it, how connected organic is to pay mm. search as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and forming that strategy based on understanding where you are from an organic position. For example, like winning on men's jeans is super important yeah. right now. But yeah, if I was that. Wranglers, said it right that time, Good job. if I was Good job. Wranglers <laughs> and I had a product that was, you know, one of my top products that is already number two, three organically, you know, paid search doesn't make a lot of sense in that situation because you're not gaining that incremental value of showing a consumer something above the fold in search that they aren't seeing already. So as a brand, you know, what I would do is more maybe promote something that's at the middle of the page on page one or at the bottom of the page on page one to get that into the slot where consumers wouldn't see it already. You know, you, one thing that I've always thought that I don't necessarily see too many brands taken as serious as probably needs to be, but just that constant monitoring of that search grid yeah. on where it's organically or in paid placement is. I mean, that's going to got to be a key part of that strategy, right? Yeah. I mean, Cause how often oh, does that 100%. change? How often does it change? I mean, it can, it can change within a couple hours. It can change within two weeks. It, it definitely depends. You know, a lot of stuff that, that brands are doing when manipulating content mm -hmm. and back end product setup, that can change how their products might serve in a certain query from an organic perspective. 
So when we're talking about paid campaigns, when I'm managing them, that's something that I need to monitor that mm-hmm. on, a, on at least a few times a week basis to make sure that I'm promoting the right product in that situation. Because Walmart's algorithm is constantly altering where products are serving on every single keyword. So it's not like I can just set myself up for a men's jeans and I'll serve the same way on men's uh, tight jeans. gray jeans. Skinny yeah, jeans. Tight jeans. <laughs> men's yeah, skinny exactly. jeans. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. So it, it gets very granular in that fact yeah. where you have to have an understanding of, of your organic rank on a very regular basis mm. across every single important term that matters to you to set up the perfect page strategy. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like I, a lot of work. Yeah, it is. It does sound like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's why you guys got me on the team, right? Yeah. That's, that's right. why we got Tim on the team. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Brooke, you got another question for Tim? I do. So I was wondering, um, is are there any things that brands need to do first? Like, is there like a setup process or do they need to do anything? Is there anything that they should be doing with their item pages first before they begin an ad campaign? <clears throat> yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, with if, if you're doing it self-service, I mean, you're doing it for yourself. You know, I use articles like this that do, mm-hmm. they are conveying the most important terms to start building that strategy. When you find out those most important terms, it's important that your content is updated to the fact of having those in your title, having those in your bullet points, having those in your product description, where is best fit, because that is what's going to improve your relevancy. Relevancy is what it makes the difference on how much it's going to cost you to get to the top or not. Um, so that is a very key point. The second key point is best in class imagery, right? On your product detail pages, have that best in class imagery because paid search is the perfect tool for driving traffic, you're getting to the top of the page, you're getting the eyes on the most important terms. However, you still have to make sure that the consumer is purchasing once on the page. And the best way to do that is to have that best in class content. Yeah. And I would say that you're, you're talking a lot about discoverability, you know, yeah. uh, but also on the conversion side, right? I mean, yep. if, you know, I think that there's, if you're really good at being able to update your content, get it submitted, get it published and all that type of stuff. And you're on top of it. I mean, doing image, you know, creating images or, or publishing images and text that are really relative to the tax season is even a bigger win, right? Because that conversion metric you can make right when yep. they come in the page. I mean, you, if you can increase that conversion ratio, I mean, that's that's where the that's where the money's at. That's where the Absolutely. money's at. Yeah. That's where the money's at. <laughs> literally. Yeah, and like, you li- yeah, literally, and that's the whole point, right? Like, it, it's a paid and organic optimizations are a combination together because paid works in that world of getting someone to your page. Now, how your page looks is what convinces the consumer to purchase. Mm-hmm. There you go. I, I think another key point in that that I would I would just say during this time um, is, and especially reading some of these stats, price promotion can be a very valuable mm-hmm. asset during this time as well in, in driving that further conversion. So having, and the further click, because it's 10 times more appealing to a consumer if they see a coupon on that product when they're searching um, in the page. And I'm trying to find the stat here on the page, but I believe I read something where it was, um, excuse me, 51% of shoppers are comparing prices and 39% of, uh, shoppers are searching for sales or savings. Mm. Oh, nice. So yeah, take advantage of that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the, the traffic is there. We can gain the traffic with paid search. But how do you get that conversion once the paid search has done its job? Mm-hmm. What other categories kind of stuck out to you that, that was interesting, Tim? Yeah. Um, so the, the next biggest one for me was actually, and it's a little bit further down the list, but automotive. Yeah. Um, kind of coming out of winter here, you know, con- people are back to being outside. They're doing their work on their cars. And that's one that's pretty stagnant throughout the year. So, you know, a car is something that we all have to maintain because we all need a car. Right. Much, yeah. right. So they're using their tax re- tax returns to further fund that time because it's also something we put off. I mean, I know for myself, I've had a leaky wheel for air pressure for the past it's six dangerous, months, Tim. and I haven't I haven't fixed it because I just didn't want to pay for it yet. Like yeah. that's the type of thing that I would use my tax returns on because it's excess income. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Makes sense. So that's a big one for me in terms of of seeing something new coming up. 
Yeah, you just went by it. I know. I can, okay. I can, I can, yeah. <laughs> He's trying to find it on the on the screen. I can't get my technology <laughs> to work over here. It's fine. You just can see it. Just leave it. it. It's, it's, there. There. it's there. It's there. The the other ones make sense. I mean, beauty beauty is being shopped all year long. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's a necessary product. So that doesn't strike me too much. It just shows that consumers are still buying their everyday products during this tax season. Electronics doesn't truly surprised me that much because guess what if i had extra money i'd probably buy a new iphone too yeah um laptops but yeah yeah. so that's where it goes like long is taking so much advantage of it because they're in season Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um the other and automotive for me that those are probably the two biggest that i'm like yeah these are these are real opportunities to jump on yeah yeah i didn't think about auto automotive but yeah mainly because i don't think about cars my husband, we always, he always makes fun of me because, like, um, you know, uh, if, if my car starts making a funny noise or something like that, I'll just turn the radio up till I can't oh, yeah. hear it anymore. That helps. And that he's just like, that's not, that doesn't fix anything. And I'm like. It fixes your it mind. It fixes my peace of mind. Yes, it does. That's, <laughs> so, and that's yeah. all that matters. And that, is, that is how into automotive I am. So, <laughs> so hey, Tim, on, on like for, let, let's talk about how easy is it for like an Amazon seller, right, to transition, start you know, start their pay campaigns. Is it different than Amazon for them when they come over to Walmart? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and, and I think that every brand needs to be prepared for that. I, I mean, the biggest difference first and foremost is the option. Um, mm. and, and paid search on Walmart, it's a first price option, right. right? So you're going to pay the cost per click that you are bidding to win on a turn. Amazon is a second price auction, which, which a lot of times will lower the price to win if your relevancy is strong enough. Um, so that that's number one. Number two is Amazon is, when you compare it to, to like the way that consumers are searching on the two sites, Amazon is absolutely a spear phishing site. You know, when a consumer is going to Amazon, they, they know exactly the type of products they want to buy. Walmart's kind of a mixture between Google and Amazon where Google is that research side, Amazon's that spear phishing, Walmart has kind of created this site that is both. Hmm. Yeah, and so the, the, the broadness becomes a little bit more important because consumers will search in some different ways. However, when it comes down to like what really matters, you need to be on those top terms for those spear fishers because they are the ones with the, uh, the intent to purchase. You know, one thing, too, that I've, I've seen Walmart, you know, I mean, obviously on Walmart Connect, you can do display and paid search. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the benefit of, of really running both types of campaigns, especially during a hot season yeah. like this? Absolutely. And that, that's, that's a great question. So when running display and search together, it, it actually becomes that full funnel strategy, mm-hmm. right? When you're, you're in search, you're there when a consumer is searching you. You got that opportunity. However... With display, you're growing the awareness. You're growing consumers that are off-site that fit a certain criteria that would fulfill what you're looking for to grow your business. Now, the importance of display is growing that awareness. However, n- display traditionally is about 98% view through, which means that a consumer sees the ad, doesn't click on it in display, but goes back into search. Yeah. Okay. And so if you're not winning in search you're not going to get that sell through that display or the awareness that the display is creating. So display works in a way of growing that base, growing that audience. Mm. Search is the way to capture and secure that audience. So when using together, it's a very strong tandem. I think that's a really great piece of advice for that folks, is. right? So, I mean, honestly, like if I was a brand, I would, if I could focus on, obvi- you know, fundamentals, attribution, content catalog, all the conversion type of content, et cetera, making sure that you're landing well organically anyway for unbranded keyword phrases this is a big fundamental piece of the strategy. Then you start layering it on top of that paid. Mm-hmm. Or, you, right. you know, you can, you can do it in parallel as well. But Well, you should, you should always move low to high funnel, right? Like, the, the whole point, and it exists on the organic side too. If you're not in search, your display is really not going right. to work that well. So you want to make sure that your search is secure. You got to plan for that. That's good, and then you move up the funnel with that, knowing that consumers are going to see the display and come back to search. So you you, you, so, you, you get your your paid search campaign rocking, mm-hmm. and then that's right. a great time to start layering in on top of that 
your display. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. So yep. you just kind of exactly. constantly increase that that awareness and that exposure and that click through. The click through. That's good. Yep. And and Walmart and it's actually Walmart and Amazon in my mind are, are the two best display mm. uh, e-commerce features right now because they use their first party data for targeting. Yeah. There you go. So, you know, with, with some of these old, other traditional online displays in the past, they would always have to license out third-party data, et cetera. Walmart and Amazon have that first-party data that they collect from their own shoppers mm-hmm. to create their audience group. There you go. And so I think it's just a little bit more advantageous because it helps you move up the funnel in more periodical steps rather than just saying, you know, going and blanking in the board on display. You know, what's really cool about Walmart, too, is the fact that, you know, they've been store, they've been in business for a long time, brick and mortar side, and they have a lot of data on the shopping behavior, too, right? And so from an omni-channel retailer strategy, I mean, when we get data release like this, that's, you know, that's open, I mean, there's a lot more, a lot more in the details, but the fact that they're releasing this to give a little bit better picture about who is this omni-channel sh- shopper. And how are they behaving? How are they using, you know, all environments to make better purchasing decisions? I mean, it's it's quite a gold mine, in all yeah. honesty. I mean, we should be able to trust this, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's oh, absolutely. Source. I mean, it's coming directly from their source, and yeah. that that's the that's the really nice part. And that word you just said, trust. Yeah. Right. Trust, yeah. When you when in historical display campaigns, they were using third party um, audience agencies and things like that to get the data and. Now you know that this is directly mm-hmm. coming from Walmart's first party source. Yep. Like that that trust outcome makes it so much more comfortable for brands to be willing to invest because they know the data is accurate. Yeah. That's right. All right. Last question. So we can wrap this up. How can White Spider help or make it easier for brands to st- to actually start these paid campaigns? Are you in sales now, Brooke? I mean, wow. We always yeah. you end it with the pitch. <laughs> okay, you know? okay. Okay. Oh, well, the pitch absolutely is the fact that we have the full capability to mine the most important keywords for each of your products and then create specific advertising campaigns and handle it all for you where we can run the campaigns, we can optimize the campaigns and continually monitor, going back to the piece I said earlier, that organic rank and when you need to shift on a given basis. So we have that full capability with our tools, our insights, and our data access to just make it so you can be hands off and feel comfortable trusting someone. Yeah, It's all I about trust. I agree. And I'm going <laughs> to add on top of that too, what I think makes us you know, very special in this space for Walmart is the fact that we know the catalog so well. Mm-hmm. Right, yep. like those fundamentals, and then also being able to publish and get things published and fight for the publishing yeah. <laughs> and timely uh, things like this. Uh, I mean, it's a big deal. I mean, you have to kind of go Absolutely. to bat for it. So, man, thanks, Tim. Absolutely. All right. Thank you for being here, Tim. This is really good. And we're definitely going to have you back because it's so fun.